Ain't no need for a peace greeting in this one, even though I'm addressing most people that have been peaceful to me. I got some hostility in this one for um, one in particular that might hear this. And uh, feel free to alert her in the event that you feel the need to do so. Now, as I've listened to others of admixture, call for a separate community and or a separate demographic under the U.S. Census, I've picked up on patterns. <clears throat> and one pattern uh, is why I've refrained lately from, actually both patterns are why I've refrained lately from calling for a separate census category. But see, one is the reason I've refrained from calling for uh, a census category specifically, and the other one is the reason I refrain from calling for a separate community, wherein, regardless of the law, we would just live around each other and have our own circles and that sort of thing. Now, there are more, but I'm going to cover what I can rightfully and reasonably cover in this one <clears throat> with a reasonable time length. The first is a pattern of which black communities care the most about color. Now, I didn't say a pattern in which black communities care the most. I said a, it, it, the, it, there's a pattern of which communities care the most about color because, see, there are already multiple black communities. The ones that care the most about color and other looks are usually not the black middle and upper classes. And it's not because they're more mixed or lighter in shade and less bantu in features like the stereotype suggests. I've been, I, that's how I grew up, I know that's not the case. It's because they're simply not limited to worrying about small things and having a grasp at straws. It's hard to, rem to remain middle class, let alone upper class, if you focus on small things that don't have a big outcome. Now, the small things that have a big outcome are things you gotta focus on. Coming from a black middle class and its circles, having every phenotype, from Mr. Cannons to those who seem to come straight from back home, and even uh, more questionable ones like Walter White's, I can honestly say that in addition to an educational division and a class division, there's also an age division. Usually the youth and not the adults are the ones that care the most about it. So as a, a, a middle class educated uh, male, high school marked the end of that BS for me and for the ones I know. I realize that for the ladies, it's different. I don't have their experience. They don't have mine either. So what this does is this creates a gender divide, even in terms of how we're going to react to the discrimination intraracially we do face if you want to say that we are of the same race. I realize you and the audience have different opinions. So when you hear me say, if you want to say that we're of the same race, I'm just simply addressing both um, opinions. So, not having the experience as an adult male with an education of being pushed out or told I'm unwelcome um, in adulthood, I can't say to my male relatives, okay, we're no longer the same heritage at all. And ironically, I was typing this uh, and then I saw where MC Cham uh, commented and said that even in his view, while we are different races, we are related and we should act like it and we should not be hostile to each other, just simply represent each other differently. Now, I would say that maybe politically that is uh, of substantial importance, Mr. Cham. When it comes to celebrity stuff, no, I don't feel a guck. Celebrities in entertainment, I don't really care who represents who, to be honest. Only because it's celebrities in this entertainment and you and I know as men that that has a limited importance in real life. But when you're talking about substantial representation, apps are cuss word lootly. We may have to um, not try to represent each other to be respectful. Well, Aikum Salaam. So truth be told, I, uh, I have to be honest though, as a male, even within my teens, the older I got, the less uh, important this was even to other males around me. So even if it took someone a while to get used to me, in the end, they usually would do so. Every time someone really made a big deal out of it, they were very uneducated. Not even from 18 on up, but even from age 15 on up. 
Now this leads to the second pattern that I noticed. Not only has it been the ladies that continued this obsessive mistreatment of each other into adulthood, and even with or without a college degree, but amongst the LSM women, since the genes for that shade seem to geneticists to be traceable only to populations outside the continent, the arguments are usually over, again, celebrities, male attention, male resources, and childish validation, and we men are still objectified non-sexually, while being expected to not objectify these women sexually or non-sexually, even within a marriage. In order to form a community and keep one, there's going to have to be some measure of endogamy, but right now, there simply aren't enough Western femmes we know of from either race or shade within these races that would be willing to match with normal men despite most women being normal themselves. And Mr. Cannon was right about something else he saw. Many women in the West, doesn't matter the race, doesn't matter the shade, act like old children. And I now call some names, for example. A name that I'm going to refuse to call is of a former YouTuber who no longer has a channel with which to defend herself and therefore isn't spreading idiocy either anymore. But Sergeant Willie Pete knows who I mean. Cause she jumped on both of us, even when we didn't mean any harm. But the other one, who has a channel but no content, is Smiles and Well, one video with a Smiles and a Twisted MD. Now Smiles, I can extend an olive branch um, <clears throat> to you or the one whose name I would not mention. And the result is actually worse than what I would get from a male who might distrust me at first glance because of what he can see, but actually takes on a wait and see approach, which is the worst I usually get from any male of any amount of African ancestry at all. Most are better to me than that. This is where I would rather start by telling black men in general to not allow any of us to disparage a phenotype or shade of men anymore without checking and canceling that man. However, many, as far as I know, many don't share the attitude that the few of them of whom we're actually aware actually express, but they simply let them talk with no pushback, and I'm not referring to jokes either. The issue of jokes a few years ago, being available to impressionable teenagers on social media was something I already covered. I may have covered it in 2017, I think. Maybe it was 2018. Now it's become an issue of serious stereotypes among young adults who are really dumb enough to still believe the stereotypes they shouldn't have believed even in their teens. Just four years difference we can see. And I can see that even from across an ocean and a continent. And then another sea. And then uh, a bit more of a land. From this distance away that I am, I can see a change remotely from four years ago. I just don't know the extent of it exactly. And this is what I've admitted to not knowing so as to explain why I'm not calling for or against a separate demographic. But as I said, the ladies I mentioned before are still problematic and I defend their right to not be disparaged for phenotype or genotype, but this does not mean I want to form a community with the likes of them at the helm, the likes of you at the helm, Mrs. M. Twisted MD, even at the helm of just the women's side of it, because you'd influence the bedrooms of the same married couples you say have to have formed, but you would wind up tearing them apart, even if you didn't mean to. We ain't got time for that. One who means no harm is still dense enough to say that men, and this is not even you I'm talking about, but another one whose name I'm not going to say yet because she means no harm, she's still dense enough to say that men shouldn't be interested in recreational uh, banging, so to speak. Now, I'm not allowed to promote or condone fornication, and I'm not going to, but I can still tell you that if every act of marital sex has to involve some headache for the man before, during, or after, then frankly there's no reason to marry or have sex at all. A community cannot become self-sustaining at all with that attitude. It would only continue to be the result of a few trysts between individuals of two communities and races that aren't friends, one of which hates the other, and the other of which doesn't hate the one enough for all the wrong the one has done around the globe. So what you might be calling for or imagining is still not tenable yet. Because the ladies in your sphere that are like you, not the ones that aren't, but the ones that are like you, aren't joining the others like Julie Jules who do make it plain, at least online, that they're ready to be fair to men, or at least to try to, and they're ready to not shun men of lesser melanin um, and uh, outer phenotypes for resembling these ladies. 
you're not ready to actually extend the olive branch except in very rare cases and you know some of them think that because we men won't ignore their foolishness we're auto you or one of them you think because we won't ignore your foolishness we're automatically your enemies or automatically just enemies to light-skinned women as if that makes any sense no we just say that your preferences aren't even worth respecting if you think that men's preferences and i mean more than just color preferences somehow don't matter if that's how you feel then your preferences are even worse if you think men's interests are automatically evil and to be denied right off the bat no negotiation no meeting halfway then your materialism and your hypergamy let alone your feminism are even worse and to be denied and not even respected but disrespected and you should be assigned to either men you don't want because you don't want them because you feel that men's interests are inherently wrong or be left to yourself forever like many men in the West deal with already anyway. Smiles, I don't walk around hating you, but you seem to intentionally misconstrue everything I say so you can attack it. And the evidence is that when Mr. Cannon says similar, but with different wording, you're cool with it. And I'm glad you are. But see, I'm not who I was two years ago or even a year ago, and I'm very much so pro-black male still for the reasons that I mentioned that about that length of time ago. Most black males aren't the enemy, the way that you and other ladies experience many unmixed sisters being enemies to women like you, and I mean like you in terms of appearance. The way they're enemies to you are not the way, I don't have that experience with men. And that's exactly what a former YouTuber did again and again, despite me telling her that while I hadn't seen anything myself to justify jumping to every same conclusion she and her partner had, I was willing to listen and learn anyway. Her response and eventually his response because he was of his loyalty to her was to start vilifying and attacking and barking and growling at me. So you see the pattern with LS men in general, which I haven't seen happen to DS men, or DS mix men is that LS men say something and in any Western, any Western femme of any amount of black ancestry that also looks even decent then completely gets wrong what we say so that they can jump down our throats. And this is the normal pattern. Now I'm glad you're not doing this with Mr. Cannon. By the same token, you're doing it with me because I was and am careful to not go in on any men of any shade who didn't disparage us for our shade as if I'm some LS savior as you call it. I'm not. An attempt to be fair and make sure that men who don't disparage you or me are not offended by me anyway is not cowardice for selling out. I'm not upset that you're calling for a separate category because you living in the USA might actually see evidence of you being unwanted in, in our space, meaning in black spaces every week. And I mean black under the one drop rule, which I neither love nor hate. For your information, the real issue is that I make it plain that my willingness to defend you from unprovoked disparagement is based on judge, uh, uh, justice and, and fairness, not based on you being LS or mixed, and that I'll side with black against Wyatt's any day because Wyatt started this mess and not black folks. Even if I'm proven to not be black and even if I'm proven to not even be partially black, my stance is still the same. It was Wyatt's that started this. So somehow you either didn't hear me say this, which means you're still assuming my platform without listening, or you heard me say it and decided to tune it out and misconstrue it so that you can continue to go in on me because um, maybe you're entertained by YouTube beefs at your age. I don't know. I'm too old for that mess. I've said it. The message is more important than the messenger. So either one is a behavior that would drive away any potential husbands from you. And since this is actually what I face most often from women of black blood period in the, United, in the southeastern United States, I can't call for a community in which women like you are still a dime a dozen because then the men can't have a legacy with you or your likes. The other ladies in, in this so-called golden sphere, if we're going to call it that, that aren't doing this, but then there, there are those who are. And I'm going to call their names too. One of them, I think her name was Black Woman Sphere. I don't remember if she changed it or not. You got issue with Dennis Furthing and with Kevin Samuels. There's a reason for it. You don't have to like everything they do. I'm not saying that. I don't like how Dennis always puts uh, starts uh, his his videos with a whole bunch of rap music and then hurry up and uh, hit the cash app and hit the. I don't like how he does it, but it's his channel. He gets to do it, and it's not my business. I just wait for the playback, skip all of that, and listen to the message. That's all. He doesn't have to like what I'm doing, and he may not if he even hears it. 
but but your if you have an issue with him that's not based on presentation per se but rather based on the message then your issue with him is that he will not tolerate uh, crap in this gender war and that means that you're going to undermine whatever community for which you are calling anyway by running the men off and here's the other thing I'm more similar to Mr. Cannon with whom you do agree than what you know, and I say this being very well aware of the differences between um, him and me that have to exist because we're different men. So I'm not saying I'm just like him and, and he, he or I are taking each other as a hero. We're understanding where we agree, that's what it is. But see, for you, for your information, even in appearance, he and I are similar. If it matters to you. I even have the same worry line on my forehead that he has, and we're both bald. So whatever superficial reason you may have had for agreeing with him would further negate you looking for reasons to beef with me unless you're just so militant and against the black community, period, based on color more than you are against the Western European diaspora that oppressed everyone outside of their own homeland. Now, if that is the case, and I'll leave it to people who know you to tell me if it is or not, but if that is the case, you, you know, you're pro-white and anti-black, then yes, we are enemies. Because even if the black community votes me off of the island, and I go to visit the USA one summer and find out I'm no longer allowed to call myself black in the US and no longer welcome in black spaces, I still will not be a part of anyone or any group that normalizes the Western European outside of Europe who trampled everyone else they found, them and us, and respects them more than they respect black folk who got trampled in the first place. None of them. That's why I don't try to blend in and become an Arab. I mean, not that I could become one, but that's why I don't even, I don't let them try to absorb me in. No, because they got anti-black ideas. They're not even dangerous or violent or hateful. I, but the little bit they have that is devoid of violence, that is devoid of danger, that is devoid of hatred is too much. Same with groups that live next to them. They're not going to be able to absorb me for that reason. Even when we agree on religion, I, act, I actually doubt the faith of any of them that have this view that white's normal and black is abnormal, even if it's just in terms of beauty. Because believe you me, if they say black is abnormal, then they're going to simply say that you are less, right off the bat, you're less valuable as a woman because of whatever black blood you do have. That's how they're going to see it. And even if they look at your shade and say that that's not the problem, they still don't want DNA that might pop up later on and make the kids' noses wider or the lips bigger or someone becomes comes out darker. They're afraid of that. See, the oppressor is always the moral inferior of the oppressed by virtue of the acts of oppression to start with. And I have a moral, not color-based reason for always being against those who look up to Massa and look down on us or anyone else. Even when some number of black folks act out trauma and then wrongly harm us as proxies for the colonizers they're afraid to reach or can't reach. So understand this, Smiles, and anyone else that, that is somewhat confused about why I stand. I can punch a colorist in the chin for disrespecting you based on your shade if he gets physical and then turn around and tell you to learn and read English and grow the uck fuck before talking about starting another community that would reproduce itself based on endogamy. You're going to have to be different from Western women, period, and frankly smiles, though I don't hate you, and I would be glad to bury this hatchet if I thought you wanted to do the same. You're still not different or better than the majority of Western women yet. You can change that, but you have not done so, from what I can see. You rightly said that Ellis men should stand up for ourselves, and I agreed when you and others said it. And once I found that nature boy, old ignorant behind was going in on LS black folk or LS folks, LX mixed folks, whatever you want to call us, golden people, and talking all, calling us all kind of mutants and sellouts, men and women alike, I went in on him and I ain't done yet. Guess who helped me do it? A jet black Fulani brother whose mother was high yellow. Who would not turn around and tell you that you don't belong. See, it's the men that are willing to go in on him for the most part, but I found out about that. I found out what he said to a lady. Shout out to her multiracial movement. So I went in on him and I ain't done yet. You were right about that. And I'll admit that you were right about that. Even if you hate me and you look for reasons to beef with me. And even if you ever outright lied on me in the future, I can admit, okay, you were right about this. That means standing up to you too, because I never provoked you in the first mucking place and fair is fair. 
even when I go harder on Wyatt's than I do on black folks, which I just said that I'm gonna do, it's because they deserve it. Fair is fair. They deserve it as a community. And to make sure that I'm at least trying to be fair, I will still give every individual a chance to determine how well he and I or she and I will get along, no matter their origin or phenotype, but not without regard for their politics. This is why a white American Muslim who worked with us here decided to go all right wing and say that his ancestors weren't right for what they did to the original Americans, and I cut his ass off when I heard him, when I heard this, and I called his faith into question. And then a non-Muslim white guy who said that whatever you won't tolerate, you better not do, got too sick to work. And even though our differences are religious, which is serious, I still ask about his recovery, and I put in a good word for him so that he could come back later. Each one got to choose, and morality does mean siding against whoever wrongs others, whether it's someone of my, whether it's someone of any appearance disparaging you for your appearance and blaming you for things you didn't do, or Wyatt determining not to hire you so that he or she can hire and pay another Wyatt with no better credentials than you. Or, even if it's someone of a more common ancestry with us, determining not to hire you because they think you don't have enough of that ancestry that we share with them. You understand what I'm getting at. Or you intentionally misunderstanding everything I say and write just so you can manufacture a beef. I got time this week. And if I'm going to answer Nature Boy, who's too divisive to be even called pro-black, by even pro-black standards, or I'm going to answer that, um, I'm going to answer that uh, uh, race traitor by his own standards, by any pro-black standards, that said on the interview that Light Skin Unity showed on uh, his or her channel, the one that said he would be so hard on his son if he was light skinned, but his wife is a pale skinned Puerto Rican. If I got time to answer them, then I got time to answer you, unless you want to admit that I'm not the enemy, not provoking you, not insulting anyone that did not provoke you. Now, you're not going to say that you have uh, issues with dark skinned people in general, and I don't expect that kind of com confession from you, whether it's true or false. But if you insist on this mess with me moving forward, I'll assume that it's not because I'm really some LS savior, but because I simply don't take issue based on shade, but based on bias. And you want me to be biased and not just and fair. I'm already biased against aggressors, not the peaceful. And if that's the real issue, well, that explains everything. And we can continue beefing because I actually believe in not being um, biased in favor of aggressors. And this is even if you and I have peace with some of the same parties that want you and me to be safe and unslandered for things that we never controlled or did. I want the whole audience to keep something in mind. You, Smiles, you need to know this. A duo that you used to have a YouTube channel, you all need to know this. A lady in the UK, you need to know this as well. And another lady that's in the States, but you, uh, you hung up on Jessica X, you also need to know this. I beat up a guy for colorism in my last few weeks of high school. And yes, I count colorism uh, as being in either direction. Discrimination within a particular race uh, against either shade in either direction. I don't sit up and say colorism is only when the paler people um, discriminate against the darker folks. That's something that is a common phenomenon outside of the United States. I admit that. But I'm going to tell y'all straight. That's not the definition that Alice Walker meant. So I beat up a colorist in my last few weeks of high school and it was a few days later that a friend who helped me out in that fight told me the colorism was the reason that some guys kept assuming I was an easy target. Thing is, of those who came in to help my opponent and those who came in to help me were guys of all shades on both sides. Ironically, one of his partners wasn't much more melanated than I was, but you know, they had uh, actually two of his partners that came in to help him out. Wasn't much more melanated than me, but they had normal West African hair, so they weren't ambiguous, and it never occurred to him, or him, never occurred to either of them, that my opponent's insults to me that morning were against them indirectly. My opponent didn't even hate 
uh, the shade or the hair, either one by itself, to be honest. He just wasn't as afraid of men with these traits as he was of other black men. And this was enough for me to choose violence. And I threw the first punch. He deserved it, but I threw the first punch. Make no mistake about it. If this opponent of mine was a victim of police brutality, or he was discriminated against in a job by some white supremacists, I would testify on his behalf simply because in those situations he was right and they were wrong. And if I caught him bullying someone smaller than him, even an outright Wyatt fellow that was smaller than him, I'd beat him again. But I would lie to the Wyatt victim and tell him, oh, I beat him up because he owed me money and never paid. I just wouldn't tell the Wyatt victim that I was doing it because my opponent was wrong and this other victim happened to be right. I wouldn't tell him that. But because that's what it is, that's why I would be doing it. I would do both in the same day if needed. I testify on my opponent's behalf in court and then turn around and beat him if he bullied somebody else, even if the one he bullied was Wyatt. So I can advocate for black against Wyatt because I know the history of the Americas enough to know that the Western European is a monster once he leaves Western Europe and he started all these conflicts and they deserved every revolt they got. And I also know that usually in history, when two colors of people are in a conflict, it's almost always the paler ones that started it. But I also know that in the USA, that has not been the case. And that's actually something that I learned from light skin motivation and a non-black man. And I give them credit for that, even though they hate me. And yes, now I do hate them in exchange. I didn't before, but now I do. But see, fair is fair. So when they taught me something that was valuable and I didn't know it before, I give them credit because my goal is to be fair. And this is something I recognized in Mr. Cannon. And I won't let anyone take out their hatred of Wyatt's on someone even like you, Smiles, even with this beef we have, which you provoked, which is your fault and not mine. I still wouldn't let them turn around and do this to you because fair is fair. Just because they're scared to try to get even with the real aggressors. Okay, fine, we're all scared of them. They got a lot of power, I admit. They're very well organized and they're very united against anyone else. Not with each other for its own sake, but against anyone else that's not them. Oh, they're real united. I understand the fear. That doesn't justify them turning around and trying to make you pay for it because you didn't do it. You didn't do what the Wyatts did. You just seem to think that they're, they're like normal or there's some kind of moral equals to the ones whom they've oppressed. But then again, I'm not gonna go into that this recording. So don't ask me to disregard the simple question of who's right and wrong in a conflict before I take sides. The God that will judge me rightly so for my decisions doesn't belong to a race and he's not even human. He's a God and he has every right to disregard my biases or, or not care about them even though he may have created me with such and throw me into hell for obeying them if I choose to obey them. That means he can do the same to you. So if I back you in a conflict, it's because I'm sure you didn't start, provoke, and deserve it. This is why I support the black manosphere, but I only see fit to defend you from being mistreated. I'm not gonna support a woman's fear. Y'all ain't y'all don't need one. So when it comes to whoever starts static based on shade, then I'm against them. And frankly, I already know that LS and mixed women can't start static uh, against DS women, nor do you have any motive to. So you shouldn't be mistreated as children or adults for your shades. I also support Rashida Strober's right to not be mistreated at any age for her shade. But I, I know that no one can do this to her now in adulthood and with her shade or they get canceled. They cannot deny her a job based on that. The only things they can do are decide how personally close they will get with her or not, and whether or not they will be with her romantically or not. That's the, those are the only decisions people really could make, and even then they might get canceled. I also know that when it comes to this gender war, and it is a war, maybe half of you ladies in the golden sphere will treat your men no better than Western uh, women are already mistreating us. And uh, maybe about the other half, I'm guessing what the percentages are, maybe the other half of you would but I've already found some of you who will not. And so then that leaves only one reason I could go and tell LS men to consider you, but even that's a moot point because it ain't been LS men sitting back and saying that they don't get with LS women. That was never the case. Now, recently, more LS ladies have begun to say, we're not shunning you anymore. Or I individually am not going to shun you like others. This has been said and I've given credit for that before. But those of you who are saying this, I'm not blaming you for what the others did, pushing us away. And, and that being the reason that, that uh, 
Well, you get the idea. But the fact that LS men never said no categorically to you also means I can't tell them to come around now when there's low chance they'll be treated as well as they would be if they left the West altogether. That's still looking like the better option, whether we want it to be or not. And it's up to you to choose that you're either going to be the same as the other Western ladies trying to compete and get as much out of us in exchange for as little as what they are willing to offer, or you're going to drop that Western model and be more traditional. After all, fair is fair, it's still a gender war. And if we have to fight, we fight to win. And if you're not choosing this gender war, great. The only problem that you're gonna face is that we're not going to know looking at you in person the first time that you're one of those that's not a part of that. We won't have a way of knowing. That's not your fault, it's not ours either. That's for those of you that have, that have not chosen this gender war. You only face an issue in which you're going to have to somehow distinguish yourselves in person. And if the manosphere is an issue to you, then it just means you're a game player too. And you've chosen a war and we're going to fight to win accordingly. Until that day, unfortunately, that gender war is going to take precedence over a little infighting, or, uh, mostly only amongst one gender in adulthood, based on shade. I'm willing to address it, don't get me wrong. But you cannot ask me to turn around and ignore what is not just a conflict, but a war between genders in the West of which you have not made yourselves exempt categorical. Especially ladies like you, Smiles. Thank you all for listening. Y'all already know what it is, Black Heart, Black Mind, Black Album. You already know the rest. But I'm going to say it anyway. Black, heterosexual, non-select male power. Just because some of y'all don't like it. Black patriarchy until extinction or judgment day.